Are you tired of highlighting stuff in After Effects for clients all day long? Well, so am I. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through how I made this highlighter template that I use almost every single day. As always, you can skip to the end, grab the project file over on our Patreon, or you could follow along and make this for yourself. Before you jump into After Effects, you need to start with a piece of paper and a marker. I drew up a triangular jig on the backside of the page and followed along the printed horizontal lines on the paper. This helped keep all of my lines straight, but also made my transition from short lines to long lines much smoother. So opening up After Effects here, the first thing I'm going to do is drag in the photo and work on aligning the marks. This is by far the most annoying part, so it's best to just get right into it. Using the box selection tool, I'm gonna mask out each line one by one, duplicating the layer as I go so each line is on its own layer. Just keep note of the order of these. In the end, we want them to go from shortest to longest, but I'm not gonna lie, this is tedious as fuck. But do you know what else is tedious? Making this highlighter animation all the time. So trust me, it is totally worth it. After your lines are all cut out, you need to move the anchor point to the left side of each layer. I use a plugin called Motion 3 that allows me to quickly move the anchor point for all the layers. But if you don't have that, you can press Y on the keyboard or select this weird icon up here in the top left and move the anchor point by hand. Just turn off snapping so you have more control over where exactly you're putting that anchor point. Once this is all done, I'll copy the position of the first highlighter and with all the other layers selected, paste that position. Now I'm gonna go over each highlighter and just adjust the rotation and ensure that they're all aligned. Adding guides can also be a massive help. If you don't have them, press Control R to toggle the rulers, which allows you to drag some guides. When you're done with the guides, just toss them off the screen. Once that's done, I like to resize my comp so that all the lines comfortably fit, minus a bunch of extra space. We can adjust this later, but let's add an adjustment layer and throw on a few effects that'll extract the lines for us. It helps if we're just looking at one of the highlighters though, so make the other ones invisible. The first is extract. If we pull the right bits to the left, you should end up with a solid black line that's masked out. With a little bit of messing around, you can soften up the edges so it's not so harsh. The second effect we're gonna add is tint. We can use this later to control the color of the highlighter. And with that done, we're ready to move on to expressions. Okay, this is finally the fun part. So let's start with a null object and we're gonna use this as our controller. This is where we're gonna throw all of our sliders and such on. Start with four slider controllers, one point controller, and a fill. To maintain your sanity, it's best to rename them now. You could just follow along with what I'm naming them. On our first highlighter layer, press T on the keyboard to open opacity and with Alt held down, click the stopwatch. This gives us access to the expressions panel. I've made the format and formulas as universal as possible for those who aren't that good with expressions, but it's actually pretty easy. Basically, we want to have a slider control which line is visible at each time. But first, let's define some variables so the formula is easier to write. I will be used for our index value. The layer's index is what number it is within the stack of layers. You can actually see it right about there. For our first highlighter, it's index number three. We want the index to be zero. So we're gonna type index minus, and then grab this little pick whip and select the index offset slider on the controller layer. And we're gonna set the offset to three on that layer as well. We could have just typed index minus three for your project. You may have more layers and we might add more layers later. So this is a nice way to quickly change the index offset if we end up having additional layers push these down. The next variable is n. n will be the number of highlighter layers that you have. Everyone will be different, but for me, it's about 23, I think. I haven't done it yet. So I'll pick whip and select the corresponding slider and set it to 23. The last variable is V for value, which we pick whip to the length. I'm gonna also divide this by 10, so we have a little bit more granular control. So a little bit of theory here. We only want one line to be visible at a time. So we're going to have a minimum value to turn on the layer and a maximum value, which will turn off the layer. If our slider is between those two numbers, we want the opacity to be 100. Otherwise, we want it to be zero. So let's define our minimum number as M1 
and set that equal to i, which is the offsetted index value. For this layer, it should be zero. We're gonna multiply that by 100 and divide that by n, which is our number of lines. Our maximum value, m2, will be defined as the index plus one multiplied by 100 and divided by n. Now with an if statement, we can say if v is less than or equal to m1, set the opacity to zero. Else, if v is less than or equal to m2, set the value to 100. And if there's any other case, set the value to zero. It's hard to see the full effect of this unless all of the highlighter layers have it. So left click and copy the expression only, and then select all the other highlighters and hit paste. Now, when we mess with the link slider, it should look like the highlighter is getting longer, which is exactly what we want. Now let's add a little bit more control over this. Press S on the keyboard to open up the scale property, and we're gonna add one more expression. We want the current value, so we'll just say value, but then we wanna also add the size adjustment to it from the controller layer. So we're just gonna add plus and then grab the pick whip and drag it to the size adjustment. To add a little bit more control again, we'll divide by 10. And now we have control over the highlighter, just in case we wanna make it a little bit thicker or a little bit longer for those cases where the highlighter doesn't quite match the text and we need to find a, a slight gap in our original lines. Okay, moving into the animation. The animation for this is very subjective. You could just leave it like this and just have the highlighter, um, or you can keyframe the length, or you can add a mask. You could do something crazy if you want. It's completely up to you. But what I did was first added a shape layer with a gradient fill that went from black to white very quickly. Then I added a fractal noise, cranked up the contrast, and changed the blending mode to overlay after contemplating using screen. What I'm left with is a mostly white rectangle that fades to black with a bit of fractal noise over that transition. With this mask layer at the very top, you can set its blending mode to stencil alpha, meaning wherever it's black, it'll act as a mask, and where it's white, it will be visible. So setting position keyframes, we can animate the highlighter on. A few things you could do to make this a little bit more interesting is to keyframe the evolution on the fractal noise and adding a posterized time effect on the adjustment layer and setting that to 16. Just make sure the mask layer is actually underneath the adjustment layer. And finally, since we added another layer above the highlighters, we need to change the index offset value to four and we should be good to go. Okay, the final chapter here, we're gonna be turning this into an animated template so we can take advantage of all this hard work. To start, open the Essential Graphics panel, select your comp from the dropdown, and click Solo Supported Properties. This panel allows you to add hooks into your composition whose values can then be adjusted in Premiere or in other compositions. So what we want to control is the length. So we're gonna grab the length slider and drag that over. We wanna adjust the size, so we'll grab the size adjustment. And we wanna adjust the color. For the length, it has a default range of zero to 100, but a little bit earlier, we divided that value by 10 in our expression. So I'm gonna change the range from zero to 1000. From here, you could export this motion graphic template for use in Premiere, or use this in a composition in After Effects. And then in After Effects, you open up the dropdown for Essential Graphics, and you could adjust these values to your heart's content. In After Effects, I set the blending mode to linear burn, but in Premiere, you could play around with what blending mode works best for you. So from here on out, my job is done. You could take this and highlight everything to your heart's content in After Effects. But if you wanna make this 10 times more useful for you and your team, you're gonna to wanna to follow along with the video on screen now to see how to import and use these essential graphic templates in Premiere Pro. Opening up this powerful template to more members on your team or allowing you to make last minute changes in the editing bay. Anyways guys, thanks for watching.